Always before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him, the one who freed his heart, the hearts of his believing servants from oppression of temptations and pleasures and the lust of desires. Imagine what is that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any bodies or associates. We sent our readings and blessings upon his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his servant and messenger who was sent with signs and miracles in his family and his companions and those that follows in his footsteps. Pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he wants you to pray him. Today's topic is the Muslim between the hurricanes of temptations and the steadfastness of faith. Dear Muslims, the importance of this topic as the believer live in a hard time, the ordeals and adversities are exploding one after the other. The one who is holding to their religion as if they are holding to a cone of fire. Also the one who is clinging to their faith is exposed to a great affliction. In a time the hypocrites are the stars and the disbelievers become more stronger. Just the last few years we see the increase of temptations and calamities upon the Muslims. As these events are happening we see those who change their stance. In many countries are confused. The tongue becomes twisted and cannot speak out of amazement, a shocking double standard. This will only increase us in faith, as the Prophet Sallallahu informed us about these enchantments at the end of time. To save yourself from these tests and trials, you must be steadfast and patient and return to Allah and do remembrance and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to save you. Enchantments in the Quran and the Sunnah. The Qur'an has 16 different meanings for afflictions or temptations or enchantments in the shepherd, some of them, like al-tila, testing trials, or tasleed, how they overcome you, or eth, sins, or al-marab, sickness, and al nafi you be expelled, or zayr, how you become invaded. And these are the meanings of the enchantments that will be upon the Muslims in our hard times, in our hard times today. Also in the Sunnah, the Hadith of the Enchantments, Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him narrated, the Prophet said, the hour will not come until knowledge is uplifted in the increase of earthquakes and times become short and the enchantments will come out and the increase of killings until wealth becomes a lot and even more, it will surpass. You you will not have you no know, need for the wolf. And this is from the enchantments of the time at the end of the time. And how a Muslim becomes steadfast, the true believer cannot be shaken by these tests and trials or any enchantments, nor will a sin enter their heart be corrupted, because their faith is firm, as high as a mountain, the wind cannot move it. For a believer, everything is clear to them. Their strong faith can di differentiate the falsehood from the truth, and no doubts become unclear to them. Their righteous action is a way to get them stay firm and not to fall into these temptations. A believer in these times of enchantments and temptations become even more stronger in his faith, and these trials cannot shake them. And the chef gave the example of Abu, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. He became stronger in the time when the enchantments was in his time. The harm of temptations effect that would shake the faith. Enchantments is the greatest thing that would shake the heart. The more the heart gets pleasures and desires, the more it becomes weak. And it can fall easily into these lust and desires. And then it will lead to more tests and trials. So enchantments, are very great on the heart. Every Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, he narrated that the Prophet said that, I left for you the Quran in my Sunnah. Hold on to it, very strong. And as we live in the time of enchantment, or test and trials, those who fall into these temptations will see a bigger one that will follow. Then the heart just absorbs these enchantments, and then the weak, the heart becomes weak in faith. 
and just keep falling into more enchantments. In the past, I said said that the fitan will come to you like a dark night, and then the heart will absorb it to the point that when you go to sleep, a believer, you might wake up a disbeliever. And this is what's gonna happen at the end of the time when the temptations come more and more. To the point that we see those who carry Muslim names and dress like Muslims, their actions is not Islam. And Hassan al-Basri said about the hadith narrated by Abu Huraira that said that there will be increase of killings. The Muslim wakes up and the blood and the blood of his brother is forbidden. And by the night time, it is permissible for him. Meaning that they can go to the point to kill this the, the Muslim brother for their, for their wealth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when you worship in the times of enchantments, it is equivalent like you are in the battles. As for those who only live for the dunya, when they see the enchantments and temptations in this time, all they care about is how to live lavishly in this dunya. In times of temptations, we see the, the true reality of people, those who are honest from those who are hypocrites, the ones who use their tongue to please others and those who use it to spread mischief and only attack Muslims. And the rest will just be confused and follow after what they say and repeat anything that is dictated to them. And all they do is say anything without any knowledge. All they do is attack Muslims. They don't have no knowledge. As if they only worship on a cliff. The first test that they see is like if they can fall off and then they go backward. And today, we see a lot of them in social media, in all these platforms. And these tests and trials, they deviate from the truth. And all they do is attack Muslims. Why they don't attack anybody else besides Muslims? And how do a Muslim face these enchantments? The question is how do we survive? And what are the means of steadfastness to face these temptations and enchantments? From the hadith reported in the book of Surah Ibn Majah, in the book of Sahih Abi Dawood, narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr, Allah be pleased him. The Prophet said, how you would be in the time that would shake the people, meaning when these enchantments come, and they will only be the worst of people. And he connected his fingers. They asked, what should we do? The Prophet said, do by that what you know and leave that what you do not know and only take from those you know and reject that of the command of the common people. We learn from this hadith the ways to save yourself from these tested trials and enchantments. Only do, only do by what you know, meaning you follow the truth, which is the book and the sunnah, and leave or reject that you do not know. Do not follow desires or follow those who just say anything that attacks Muslims. And come to the scholars, they are the inheritors of the prophets, they will they will show you the guidance because their guidance is from the guidance of the prophets and negate the commands of the common ones. They are followers of the desires, they are hypocrites, and they have double standards, and they shame their stands, and all they care is about this dunya. And the Sheikh said they are the Waybullah of our time and have a strong faith as a weapon and also have piety and fear and only depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who will guide you and save you in these tests and trials. And finally, I have some announcements to make. On the May 1st, there will be a protest for Gaza. And um, we see today, it's in Pali Square, 4 p.m. And we see today, colleges and universities have joined these protests. And they, they did something, something came out of it. Some good outcome came out of it. Um, just now when I was watching the news, one university have stopped the aid to um, this occupation settlers. And we see these protests are ongoing, they're not stopping. Meaning if universities and colleges are joining, that means that the people are waking up and their conscience are waking up. And we are on the right path. We have the right to this land and all this oppression and killing inshallah will stop soon is, is just that it's enchantment. We are going through tested trials today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to differentiate those and from those who are loyal and devoted, from those who will go backward as I just explained again. And also the parking and the telephone and the hygiene brothers. When you come to this masjid, 
you are facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You come into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have the best dress is do not play. And finally, we're gonna make salat al janaza for Sheikh Abd al Makid al Zandani. And this is a prominent Sheikh that the whole world knows. And I remember for the brothers who used to become Muslim, there was three countries they would go to in the Middle East, which is Morocco or Egypt or Yemen. And then a lot of the brothers told me how they was amazed at this Shaykh, may Allah have mercy on him, Shaykh Abd al al Zandani. So inshallah, a lot of Muslims today have prayed the uh, Salat al Janazah on him. And so inshallah, after the Salat, we will pray Salat al Janazah for Shaykh Abd al Zandani. Because I'm